Hey everyone, in this lesson we would like to discuss the settings of uh, overcurrent relay and applications of overcurrent relay. So as you see here, we have the uh, induction disk similar to the directional uh, relay, power relay. And at the beginning we discussed the induction disk relay. This is a similar one uh, which will be used in this uh, video. So as you remember that it consists of two uh, poles, okay, each of them takes the same current I1, okay, I1 and I2. Two currents here, which produces two fluxes, phi1, phi2, and between them an angle, okay, between these two currents angle, which will lead the two or the two fluxes between the two flux angle alpha, which will lead to production of torque inside the induction disk. Okay, so this image is similar to the one for the induction disk, which we discussed the two, uh, which was discussed, which we discussed in um, two lessons before. Okay, so uh, what we would like to understand about the settings of our current relay, we have to understand some definitions. The first one is the peak up current. We discussed that this one a lot. I B or the peak up current. This is the minimum current required in order to the relay to operate. Okay, minimum current required for the relay to operate. This is the current which will produce a value of the torque which will exceed the value of the uh, torque of the spring. Okay, in order to rotate this uh, disk. Now, another thing is called the time delay setting. We would like to make our relay or uh, give our relay a value of time delay. Okay, we would like, we don't need the, or we don't want the relay to operate as fast as possible. We would like to operate it after a certain amount of time or after a certain delay time. So how can we achieve this inside the overcurrent relay? So the first thing we'd like to understand is called the time multiplier setting or TMS this one decides the arc length through which the disk travels by reducing the length of the travel the time is reduced so the time multiplier setting or the time dial okay both of them are similar to each other what is this you will see here an indicator okay this one let's start by thinking a little bit let's understand what does this mean this is related to the length of the arc at which does this, the disk travels okay or the distance or the arc which it travels okay so what does this mean so at the beginning you will see here that this scale have a beginning here and the end for example at the beginning here we will assume it is called one or the full arc length and this one is called the uh, lowest value or for example 0.1 of the arc length so one here means the full arc length 0.1 means that one per one uh, 0.1 of the arc length or 10 percent of the arc length okay so what does this also mean remember that we have the disk here which rotates and the contacts here, this contacts, okay, tries to go here and close with the other contact. Okay, this one moves like this, okay, by the effect of the torque, leading to closing of this contact. Okay, now let's assume that we start at this point. We start here at 1. Okay, so the uh, disk starts from this point. So what is the distance it travels? It travels from here rotating like this till it reaches the contact here to it till it reaches this contact. Okay, so this is one L1 at the full arc length. Now let's assume that we are starting at this point, this point. So that it will go like this and reaches the contact. So the second one is called L2. Okay, so L1 and L2 is the distance traveled by the disk in 
the different cases okay so as you see here that l2 or the length of the arc traveled is less than l1 which is the full arc length okay now as you see that or as you understand that lower arc length or lower distance travels means that it will reach the contact faster okay so the time taken by the disc in the second case t2 is less than the time taken in case of l1 okay so the time taken here t2 in case of the arc length l2 is less than the time taken by l in case of l1 t1 is the time taken in case of l1 l1 is the full arc length the full distance okay and the time equivalent to this distance is t1 now we can convert l1 and l2 the distance here into something which is called the tms or the time multiplier setting so what we, what does this mean it means that the tms will be equal to from point one to one where where one means we are taking the whole distance okay the total distance so it means that it will take larger time okay but point one you are taking point one of the lens or point one of the lens of the arc which means that it will be 10 percent of the distance so the by controlling the time multiplier setting we can control the delay time okay so by controlling the tms we can control the delay time of the relay okay so it can be from point one to one the plug setting multiplier another value called the plug setting multiplier which is different from the time multiplier setting what does this mean it means that the value of current compared to the big up value so what does this mean this is another value important for us so plug multiplier plug multiplier or uh, psm plug setting multiplier what does this mean it means that the value of current currently flowing with respect to the peak up current okay simple as this so the psm means that the value of uh, the current with respect to the peak up current okay so uh, if we are saying that the bsm or the plug setting multiplier equal to what does this mean it means that the value of current is equal to two times peak up the peak up current equal two times peak up current okay so we understand time multiplier setting refers to the distance or the arc length so it can be 0 0.1 0 0.1 means the minimum distance which means it will take shorter time one means the complete distance which means it will take large time okay the black setting multiplier means that the value of current compared to the peak up current or how um, the, how much is the value of current compared to the peak up current so uh, if you have our inverse characteristics here for the relay you will see that here it starts at the peak up current when the current before peak up current the time taken is nearly equal to infinity very large time in order to operate before peak up time starting from or after peak up current what will happen we will have a certain time of operation okay this is our inverse characteristics in case of the induction disk now if we divide the current here by divide here by i big up what it will give us okay this time will be the same but here it will be convert to the black setting multiplier why i b i big up over i b equal one okay here is the value of current what does this value equal to i equal to uh, the 
black setting multiplier multiplied by uh, the value of peak up current peak up current okay so as you remember bsm is equal to the value of current which can be here or here or here or here i in general divided by peak up right so if we divide this one by i big up then this one will be converted to block setting multiplier so here it can be two what does this mean it means that the value of current is two times the peak up current here for example the value of current multiple of the peak up current now this is according to the block setting multiplier now for the inverse characteristics you will see that we have here the same curve the inverse curve but at a different time setting multiplier okay you'll see that here at 0.1 you will see that here let's uh, take at a certain value this value for example 2 okay and if we go up like this like this you will see this value is time t 3 for example this one is time t 2 this one time t1 so you'll see that t1 is the minimum current and t3 is the maximum current at the same value of uh, current okay now at t3 the tsm equal one or the maximum arc length so it will take the maximum current here at t1 the minimum value of arc so what does it mean it will take the minimum value of current now what are the applications of overcurrent protection number one the motor protection the inverse time characteristics and the instantaneous phase and ground overcurrent relays can be employed for motors above 120 horsepower so for motors above 120 horsepower or larger motors we use the inverse time and the instantaneous phase and ground over current relays for small and medium sized motor you will see that the cost of component inside the uh, for the relays the cts and so on expensive compared to the price of the motor okay remember that the protection device are expensive so they are expensive compared to the uh, motor itself the price of the motor itself so for a small and medium sized motors with the cost of cts and the protective rays are not economically uh, justified or is not economically uh, justified it means that the cost of the protection device is greater than the motors okay in this case we use thermal relays as an overcurrent protection and high rupturing capacity fuses for uh, protection against short circuit this one against short circuit this one against the over current now here is an example this this is an image for the high rupturing capacity fuses okay it has a rating of uh, 800 ampere okay the thermal relays used for uh, overload uh, protection and the high rupturing capacity fuses used for short circuit protection the second one is the transformer protection the overcurrent rays are provided in transformer protection okay in large transformers in addition to differential relays or differential protection which we will discuss in the course in order to take care of through faults another thing is that temperature indicators and alarms are always provided for large transformers okay for this the overcurrent and differential are for large transformers now for small transformers below 500 kilovolt which are distribution transformers are generally protected by drop out fuses as the cost of the relays plus circuit breakers are not generally just justified they are very expensive compared to the uh, price of the transformer okay so here is an, an image of, for example this one is a drop out fuses 
this one this is uh, three dropout fuses since we are having a three phase system okay and each of this one is our dropout fuse or the protection fuse this image uh, i took from a, a distribution uh, substation okay now the third uh, application is the feeder protection the feeders protection in instantaneous over release for outgoing feeder for feeders uh, close to the loads we use the instantaneous overcurrent uh, relays for uh, protection the inverse time overcurrent relays is used for protection of distribution lines as we go up near to the uh, generation part okay or as we go up from uh, load to the distribution to transmission to generation and so on as we go up we provide more um, time delay, delay values another one which is the definite minimum time release used as a backup for differential and distance protection the differential and distance both of them will be discussed inside the course lastly for the feeder protection the direction of our current release or the directional power uh, release the similar to the induction disk directional relay which we discussed before in order to allow the current to flow in or the power to flow in one direction and prevent it from flowing in the reverse direction this is an example of the uh, over current uh, relay or the inverse time over current relay with its own values okay in one of the videos we will discuss this one in more details.